Today we're going to discuss margin of error, uh, and I wanted to start by discussing uh, how we use margin of error. Uh, so really, the part that students tend to have the most trouble with is calculating the margin of error, and uh, we're going to get to that in later videos, but in this video we're just going to focus on how do you use the margin of error, what can the margin of error tell us. So I thought it would be helpful to take a look at a little example I made up. Here you have uh, Mayor Cheese and Colonel Cucumber are in a hotly contested race for an open U.S. Senate seat. Uh, in a recent trotting poll, uh, Mayor Cheese is up 46% to 41%. So Mayor Cheese pulled in at 46%, Colonel Cucumber pulled in at 41%, uh, and this poll has a 4% margin of error. So that's really the focal point of this section. Uh, the poll used a 95% confidence level. We'll discuss what that means in a second. So uh, an obvious question here would be, is there a clear leader? Does Mayor Cheese or Colonel Cucumber have a clear lead in this election for an open U.S. Senate seat? So there's four terms I want to focus on as we discuss whether or not there's a clear leader. Those four terms are margin of error, confidence interval, confidence level, and alpha. Understanding, being able to appropriately use these four terms uh, will make life easier uh, for you when we get to the next step, calculating the margin of error. And that's the step that students tend to uh, struggle with the most. So our margin of error, later on we'll calculate it. In this example it's already given, it's 4%. Uh, or you can always write as a decimal. 0.04. Your confidence interval is the interval to which uh, we have a statistic here. Mayor Cheese hold in at 46%, uh, but we would like to try and capture the parameter. We would like to capture uh, the actual opinion uh, of the voters. Normally uh, when you're talking about polling uh, it's not practical to poll everyone that will participate in an upcoming election so you poll a sample of the population and then once you poll a sample of the population you report a margin of error you're saying I think the population's opinion is going to be within this interval. So for Mayor McCheese, we're going to look 4% below his statistic, which would be 42%. We're going to look four percent above which would be fifty percent we can use this information to construct his confidence interval so his confidence interval would span from 42% to 50%. As in, you're expecting the actual opinion of the population to be between 0.42 and 0.5. Uh, this is a, you can think of this as a proportion. Um, oftentimes, you can see this, sometimes we use interval notation. Another way you will see this written 
is 0 0.42 is less than P population parameter or the, the actual proportion less than 0 0.5. Uh, so that would be the confidence interval for Mayor McCheese. As for his challenger, Colonel Cucumber, who happens to have a long name, you're going to need to once again go, let's get the underline off here, 4% below. So that would be 37% and 4% And let's turn the underline off. And that would be written in interval notation 37% to 45%. And inequality notation, you would expect the population parameter to be between 37% and 50%, 37% and 45%, excuse me, okay. So, and I wrote everything here as a decimal, um, you could also write it as a percent. So, here we've constructed the confidence interval for both Mayor Cheese and Colonel Cucumber. Uh, here's the big question. Is there a clear leader? Uh, so a clear leader, uh, do the competence intervals overlap? The poll said that uh, Mayor Cheese was up 46% to 41%. Um, but what could, what's, in with, what's within reason, what's possible, is that Mayor Cheese could be performing as poorly as 42% and Colonel Cucumber could be performing as well uh, as 45% with the electric. So if that's the case, Colonel Cucumber could actually be in the lead. So uh, you would consider this a statistical tie because their confidence intervals overlap. So the poll would suggest that Mayor Cheese has the lead, but when you take into account the margin of error, it's still very reasonable for the opinion of the population uh, for Colonel Cucumber to be in the lead or for this race to be tied. So you would think of this as being a statistical tie. So 4% is your margin of error. We added and subtracted the margin of error to get our confidence interval. I showed this, I represented this with two different notations. The last thing we're going to talk about is the confidence level. Confidence level is important for calculating the margin of error. Uh, oftentimes when you're watching the television, or uh, maybe you're watching one of the 24-hour news shows, they don't bother reporting the margin of error. They'll, they'll report the margin of error. They don't bother reporting the confidence level. Uh, but it's important. Here it is 95%. As you can see. And we need to know the confidence level to talk about alpha. So confidence level, uh, we are 95% confident that the opinion of the population uh, would be between uh, 0.42 or 0.5, or we're 95% confident 
that at this point, between 42 and 50 percent of the electric will vote for Mayor Cheese, and between 37 and uh, 45 percent will vote for Colonel Cucumber. Keep in mind, 95 percent, that is, uh, as a fraction, that is 19 over 20. So, one in every 20 times we perform a poll like this, we're expecting to get the parameter wrong. We're expecting the parameter to fall outside our confidence interval. So uh, polling companies during uh, election season that are doing dozens and dozens and dozens of polls, they're using a 95% confidence level, which is very common. Uh, one in every 20 of their polls you would expect to be completely wrong. Alpha, which is going to be a tool that we use in calculating the margin of error. Alpha is the complement to your confidence level. So your confidence level will always equal 1 minus your alpha. Well, I can get the paste here. Here we go. 1 minus your alpha. So in this case, your alpha is going to be 5% or 0 0.05. 95% uh, confidence level is very common to work with. Um, a 98%, 99% uh, confidence level is also, um, also used. So a confidence level will have an effect on your margin of error. The more confident you are, then the larger your margin of error. You can think of it like this. Let's say that you have a um, hundred fish swimming below you in a pond. One of those fish has uh, one of those fish is made out of pure gold and is worth millions of dollars. All right, there's one golden fish out of a hundred below your boat. You go to cast your net. Uh, think of your margin of error as your net. The higher your margin of error, or the larger your net, the more likely you are, the more confident you are, that you're going to catch the golden fish. So the higher your margin of error, the higher your confidence level. The higher your confidence level, the higher your margin of error. So you're probably asking, well, why don't we just use a 100% confidence level? Well, the higher your margin of error, the less you can conclude about the poll. If we used, uh, say, a 99% confidence level, we might end up working with a margin of error of 8%, uh, and there's not going to be many polls in which, if you're using an 8% margin of error, you're going to be able to conclude anything. Uh, so we take that risk of the poll being wrong, uh, so that we can have a reasonable margin of error uh, and have something to discuss. Uh, so the big four terms that you're going to really need to be comfortable with moving forward when we start calculating this margin of error. It's margin of error, confidence interval, the percent above and the percent below your statistic. Uh, confidence level, oftentimes you work with 95, maybe 98, 99 percent. Uh, the more confident you are, the larger your margin of error. And then alpha is the complement to your confidence level. So if it's 95%, this would be 5% or 0.05.